Hi there, welcome back. This is Online Grocery Shopping Part 4 for grocery.walmart.com. If you'll recall from Part 1 of the presentation, Walmart is another store in Janesville that uses its own platform and its own delivery service for grocery shopping and grocery delivery. So let's go there now and start doing a search. All right, so first thing that um, that I noticed, so I'm up here at grocery.walmart.com. Uh, a couple things right away. The site's a little bit maybe busier than uh, the Instacart site or uh, the Woodman site. You'll also notice that um, we are in the pickup and delivery section of Walmart's online shopping experience as opposed to their walmart.com shopping experience. You can toggle between the two, but if you want pickup and delivery services for groceries, you need to be in the pickup and delivery uh, side of their website. Um, we have some banners down here. We have some pop-up messages. Uh, we have a notice here about um, um, a delivery, t delivery or pickup uh, ordering time slots. And we also notice here that it's it's kind of defaulting to pick up services from the Stoughton store of Walmart. I'm not sure why that is. It's it's guessing that this is my nearest store. You could change this at this point, but because we're focusing on delivery, you really don't need to do that at this point because you will have to log in to your account anyway in order to reserve a time slot. So we can just go ahead and um, start shopping. Now the, the different ways to find items on Walmart include the search bar up at the top um, as well as a menu of departments. So here is the search bar up here at the top and over here the button with three horizontal lines which can be easy to miss um, has a menu in it which takes you to the grocery departments and also additional departments in Walmart. So those are the two ways to um, search primarily. Let's start with the search bar and I'm going to enter in spaghetti. And right away I get some results for spaghetti here and I'm going to just go with the um, the great value thin spaghetti one pound. The way that I can add to my cart is clicking on the add to cart button. I have the option of increasing the number of boxes in my order, but it has um, added one item to my cart so far. Another way to search for spaghetti would be by department. So you could go back to the menu button up here on the top left, click that. And I'm going to go to the department uh, called pantry, click on the right arrow. And I get lots of uh, options here in the pantry. There's a pasta and pizza option. And I'm getting quite a lot of results, 358 items in the pasta and pizza area uh, of this department. So there are ways that I can filter my search to try to get closer to what I'm after, which is spaghetti, spaghetti noodles. I'm going to show more in the shelves. So I've got shelves here with some options. I have nutrition options. I have types of food. So let's start with the shelves and take a look at that. Um, so our options are uh, a shelf of dry pasta, pasta sauce, macaroni and cheese. If I wanted to filter by shelf I would, for spaghetti noodles, I'd be looking in the dry pasta section. And you'll see that it's 168 items versus the 358 here at the top of our original search. I could also look by types. So if I go down to types, I see there's a pasta and pizza type with only 58 search results. I have a dry pasta option with only 50 results. And since spaghetti noodles are dry pasta, I'm going to take a wild stab um, at this, that dry pasta might be the best way for me to filter my search. All right, so with that filter in place, yes, it looks like I'm getting uh, spaghetti options right here, right away. And actually, here is the one that I had selected by using the search bar. 
So I can go ahead and pick this one. I already have one in my cart. If I click on the blue circle here around the one, I can add another box to my cart and it shows up in my cart up here at the top. You can search by brand using the search bar, which is something we saw in the Woodman site as well. But for some brands, such as Walmart's Great Value generic brand, the search results may be overwhelming. Um, so let me show you an example of that. If I search by Great Value, which is Walmart's generic brand or their store brand, I get 2,491 search results. Now I can filter like I did before. I can filter by department. I can filter by type, but I still think it's a little bit overwhelming. These are still pretty high numbers here, um, even if we were to filter. So my suggestion would be a combination of brand and food type. For example, great value spaghetti. And that kind of a search um, lowers my search results, but also really directs my search results to what I'm looking for. And here is that same item I've found. The two other ways that I've done a search, I can click on the number two, I can add another box to my order. So following that same theme, let's find some Tide laundry detergent. So I'm going to do a combination again of brand and type of product. And here we go. 168 results for Tide laundry detergent, but I'm pretty likely to find what I'm looking for right up here at the front, or right up here at the top. Now something I didn't try before, but I may try it now. I wonder if I can try Tide powder laundry detergent. Yes, so even that is helpful, even putting more detail in the search bar at the top so that your search results uh, load uh, the most relevant items toward the top of your search screen. So let's go ahead and add one to our cart. We'll add this one right here. And now I'm up to four items in my cart. Now something I've noticed about Walmart, and it took me a while to figure this out. I can't see my cart right now. I can't click on it. There's no way for me to make adjustments in it. And the reason for that is you have to be signed in to your account and actively in your account to make adjustments to your cart. So you can go ahead and shop, but if you eventually want to see the status of your cart or make any changes to your cart, you will need to log in. And we'll do that in just a minute. Um, one more thing I want to point out here. The products have hearts next to them, and I think most of them do. Um, so this one I put in my cart. If this is a favorite product of mine that I will probably repurchase again in the future, I can click the heart and it will add it to my favorites. Now again, I am not signed in, so it doesn't know who it's adding a favorite to. It doesn't know which account it's adding a favorite to. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in so that I can add this favorite and make some modifications to my account. So I will do that and be right back. All right, so I have logged in, and you'll notice that as soon as I logged in, the heart that I had clicked before I logged in is now uh, colored red. So I know that this is now part of my favorites, and I could retrieve it later if I'm doing a future grocery order and would like to choose items for my cart from my list of favorites. You'll see that I am logged in now, um, logged in as myself, and I can underline my name up here to get to my account. My account settings such as recent orders, order history, how I like to pay, um, I can manage my addresses, uh, pickup addresses, delivery addresses, and my communication preferences. Um, also, I now have access to my cart. So my cart is able to be underlined and I can click on it and I can see that I have four items in my cart. Three boxes of spaghetti, one box of laundry detergent. I can also see that my subtotal right now is $15.36 and Walmart requires a $30 minimum in order to check out. So I need to do a little bit more shopping. All right, so let's go ahead 
and look for some more things. Let's try bananas because I've been using that example in all of these demonstrations. All right, and I was playing around earlier with this, so I had already added bananas to my favorites. You can see that it's highlighted here. But if this is the item I'm interested in, I can add it to the cart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add about four bananas to my cart. And then let's, um, let's actually go to my favorites and see if we can populate the cart with some of my favorites. To get to those, they are up in the grocery menu button. So click on that again. And it's one of the first options here, favorites. All right, looks like I have some frozen pizzas, some ice cream, there's my bananas, there's some of my laundry detergent as favorites. So let's go ahead and add some items to the cart from favorites. I can click here, I'm gonna get uh, I'll get two frozen pizzas because it appears that there is a maximum um, amount you can order of those right now. I'm going to add the ice cream to my cart. I'll get a couple of those. I'm getting closer to my $30. And then let's go ahead and search for, let's do diapers. Diapers. So it's already preloading. Let's see, I need some size 6 diapers. And I'm going to search by brand. Loves was my favorite when I needed diapers in my household. So I'm going to add this to cart. And there, I'm up to uh, the 30, over the $30 minimum requirement to check out. Now, this is something I also noticed. Now I'm unable to underline my cart. Even though I'm in my account, I'm active, for some reason I can't get to my cart right now. What I discovered is that I need to click again on my account where it has underlined to kind of reactivate that I'm in my account. And now I can underline my cart and make any changes that I need to at this point. Let's go ahead and check out. And Walmart's giving you some recommendations for additional products to buy. I'm going to continue my checkout. All right, so I quick jumped on Walmart uh, this morning to see if there were any uh, slots here so I could do this part of the demonstration. I've struggled with um, seeing any slots so that I could finish this presentation and demo for you. Um, notice that right now I'm actually in the pickup area, but I want to lo be looking for delivery options. So I'm going to click on delivery. And it has my address preloaded here. This is the library address. I'm going to select the address that it has preloaded and uh, click continue. Changing your location may alter your product inventory. Yep, I understand. I'm going to change my location anyway. And now I'm in the delivery area for my grocery order. And actually, um, this is new since I checked this morning. There's one available on Thursday of this week with the delivery fee starting from $9.95 and one available on Monday, May 4th from uh, with a delivery fee from $7.95. I'm going to go ahead and click Monday, May 4th. I'm going to select that. And I have two options here which have different prices, so that's interesting. I'll select the cheaper one, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Monday, May 4th, and click Continue. And that is as far as I'm going to go because now I'm at the point where I'm going to add my payment information and I won't be adding a credit card in this demo today. This is also where you can add a promotional code if you have one, um, if you've seen one or you have one as part of your account. <clears throat> All right, I jumped back to this message because I actually think I'm going to change my mind about something I said at the beginning of the presentation. Um, if you do toggle between pickup and delivery because maybe you had pickup selected or defaulted to pickup at the beginning of your ordering process and then you changed to delivery, if you actually were at a different location when it was defaulting to pickup, such as at the Stoughton location, um, this could actually alter what products are available um, from you because it may have been pulling products available at the Stoughton store instead of pulling products available at the Janesville store. 
So I think I'm going to amend what I said at the beginning, which is that when you start your process before you have even logged in, if you are noticing that it is defaulting to a location that is not the closest to you, I think that I would suggest to change it right away off the bat. And you can do that again by clicking on change, locating your closest store, selecting continue, and then acknowledging that yes, the product selection may be different from the Janesville store as opposed to the Stoughton store. And then assuming you've, you've filled your cart, you can then go back into your, um, into your uh, slot reservation screen, select delivery. Whoops, I didn't mean to add a new address. Select delivery, continue. It's still going to give you this message, but at least at the beginning, it thought that you were shopping in Janesville. And so hopefully you were pulling your inventory for your shopping cart from the Janesville store from the beginning. One more thing I'd like to show you before I go back to the PowerPoint slides is how to log out. Um, initially, I would have um, I, I would have thought you would go up to your account to log out. So where it says Hi Kara, clicking there, I would have expected to see a log out option over here, but that's not how this particular site works. To sign out of your account, you actually go back to the menu button over here on the left, scroll all the way down underneath the departments, and then underneath customer service, you are able to sign out of your account. All videos that have been part of this online grocery shopping series are posted on Hedberg Public Library's Facebook page, as well as the library's YouTube channel. Please contact the library's virtual information desk if you have any questions about online grocery shopping. We are there Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can either contact us via email at questions at hedbergpubliclibrary.org or you can leave us a voicemail by calling 758-6600. Then a reference librarian will give you a call back to help answer your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in to any parts of the presentation about online grocery shopping that you may have watched. Have a great day.